Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting of February 24, 2020. Have everyone <laughs> rise for the National uh, for the Pledge of Allegiance and then remain standing for a moment of silence, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'll read this first. Um, we are saddened to learn of the death of Rory Murphy. Rory was fondly known as the mayor of Abington. He was a fixture in Center Abington on the bench near 500 Washington Street. Rory was involved in the Boy Scouts in Abington. During Christmas, you could find Rory helping the Boy Scouts with their Christmas tree seals at Bailey's Garage. Mr. Murphy was woven into the fabric of the Abington community. Throughout the years, he was the special assistant to the vice president of Abington Savings Bank, water boy to the Abington High School football team, an umpire for the Abington Little League, deputized special police officer, and specialized kitchen assistant at the Alamo. Thank you, Rory, for making Abington a brighter place with your life here. Thanks, everybody. And just um, <coughs> follow up on that. Um, Rory's wake will be this Friday from 4 to 7 with a service at the funeral home on Saturday at 11 a.m. Uh, Barry will be private with his family. Uh, more details and information will follow. So, uh, Rory's family is considering hosting an opportunity for fans of Rory to get together and share a few humorous, sentimental stories about Rory so his family members can hear more about how special he was to the residents of Abington, and he certainly was. The details of this portion of Rory's memorial service have not yet been finalized. So. And Mr. Chairman, our DPW director has been asked uh, to either repair or to replace the bench. That's outside, I think it's 500 Washington Street. I'm not personally familiar with, with Rory and his habits, but I know, uh, as it says, he was a fixture, and so he's been asked if he can repair that. And, uh, in honor of Mr. Murphy. Very nice. Very nice. Um, also, the Abington Celebrates group is going to put a plaque on it once it's either replaced or repaired, just in honor of Rory. So, uh, okay. Uh, public announcements, Kevin? Yes. Uh, the Abington Rotary Club is hosting a fundraiser dinner theater presentation on Saturday, February 29th at the Abington Senior Center, 441 Summer Street. Uh, it is a pasta dinner at 5.30, uh, followed by a presentation of History at Play, Challenger, Soaring with Krista McAuliffe. And the Caring Hearts Dinner Dance is Saturday, March 7, 2020, at 7 p.m. Um, it's a fun day to gather, dance, raise money for the Jeff Coombs Memorial Foundation. Tickets are $35 each or a table of 10 for 300 if purchased by February 29th. Uh, raffles, DJ, buffet, chicken dinner, homemade desserts, dancing, mystery bag, scratch a raffle, and more. Contact Christy at 617-909-5768 or Jack at 617-378-8543 or Susan Terrell at 781-351-0610. Jim? Yeah, for the March 3rd presidential primary, the first choice you'll make is which day to vote. You can early vote from February 24th today through February 28th at Town Hall, Monday through Thursday from 8.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. and on Friday, 8.30 to 12.30. And I'd like to point out that uh, as of today, right now, 130 people have already voted. They're down there now. They're down there right now still voting if you want to rush down and uh, get your vote in. Ken? Yes, um, having a Celebrates group is having a community participa participation informational meeting. What, what that basically means is if you want to become involved in the Flag Day Founders Day weekend of June 12th through the 14th, we would encourage any civic group, youth group, church group to come and meet us and um, you know, we'll give you some ideas. You might have your own ideas. There's lots of events all weekend long. So please, that's Thursday, March 5th. Um, 7 p.m. at the Abington Police Community Room. Uh, uh, 7 p.m. 
Okay. And also, uh, I have to read this or I'm going to get in trouble. Um, Crew 41, Abington Summit Award candidate is to host a pasta dinner fundraiser. Troop 41, Eagle Scout, and Crew 41, Abington Summit Award winner. Also, Board of Health member Aaron Chris will be hosting a pasta dinner fundraiser for his historic house sign program, which is kind of a neat idea. All the historic uh, houses in town get plaques with the dates on it. We would, the Historical Commission has been trying to do that for a long time. That is Sunday, March 8th, 4.30 to 6.30 at the United Church of Christ. Um, in, he's trying to raise funds for the thir first 30 signs for the oldest houses. Um, I'll just leave it at that, but if you uh, would like information, um, you can email ESC, which stands for Eagle Scout Candidate Aaron Christian at gmail.com. Thank you. Thank you. Tim? Just a reminder that coming up on Sunday, March 15th, is our 41st annual St. Patrick's Day Parade. Uh, kicks off at 1 p.m. Uh, this coming Saturday, February 29th, they are having a meat raffle at the Polish Club. That's at 2 p.m. to help defray the cost of the parade. So if you're available this Saturday, uh, Polish Club at um, 2 p.m. All right. Thanks, Tim. Um, I have two. Uh, the MIAA basketball and hockey playoffs start this week. We'd like to wish our good luck and support to Abington High and encourage residents to attend uh, this week's games. Tuesday, girls basketball at Rockland High, 6.30 p.m. Wednesday, boys basketball home versus Blue Hills at 6.30. And Abent, uh, Friday, Abington High Hockey versus Foxborough at Canton Ice House at 5 p.m. Uh, good work. Uh, to the green wave. What date was that? Um, say that again. What date was that? Oh, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. All right. Um, I have an announcement for myself. Uh, just so everyone knows, I am not running for re-election. Please hold your applause, you guys, because I know how you are. <laughs> uh, thanks. There you go. Good for you. Thanks. Um, just something real quick. Uh, President Obama delivered a farewell speech January 10th of 2017 in Chicago. I'm going to quote a little bit of what he said. Um, this is, Obama said, this is where I learned that change only happens when ordinary people get involved, get engaged, and come together to demand it. He also said, if you're disappointed by your, your elected officials, grab a clipboard, get some signatures, and run for office yourself. And that's actually what I did uh, in 2017 and ran for selectman. Uh, it wasn't easy then, and it's certainly not easy now, uh, but I did it. I actually encourage any of you that are here in the audience or watching on cable uh, or who uh, keep chiming in on Facebook, Life in Abington or Life in Abington Uncensored, um, I don't, I, I not encourage, I challenge you actually to be brave and take that next step and uh, really get involved. Is very important, I think, for this town uh, in moving forward. So, and I know that Ken is running. I know that Bob Manning has pulled papers. So, uh, anybody else that does that, I give him a lot of credit. So, was that that's Obama's it. speech? The part about the Abbott on Facebook? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was. Actually, it was. <laughs> it actually was. So, let's see. Uh, public comment. He wanted something to say. None? All right. Public appointments? None? Thought we have it on the agenda. All right. Action discussion items. Uh, vote to accept the minutes of January 27, 2020. I'll entertain that motion from someone if you've read everything. Did anybody have the minutes in their pocket? No. I don't think so. I didn't see them. We'll just hold off on that then. Uh, make a motion to postpone until the next meeting till we have a call. We may be able to get it done by the end of tonight. Uh, yeah. We can get them by tonight. So I can wait till next meeting. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right, update, vote to approve subcommittee recommendation for town council and labor council services. 
Yes, in your packet is a recommendation uh, from the subcommittee that met on February 8th um, at 9 o'clock. Uh, the subcommittee met with Murphy, Toomey, Hess, Lahane, for who are interested in town and Labor Council, KP Law, who was interested in town and Labor Council, and Clifford and Kenny, uh, who had uh, applied for the Labor Council only. And after conversation and uh, interviews, the subcommittee is recommending that uh, the boards stay with Coltman and Page as town council uh, and use Clifford and Kenny for labor council. So I uh, defer to Tim and Jim if you get anything to add. And just as you know, the, the, the second piece of pay page is the minutes, but I've been told that subcommittee meeting minutes only have to be approved by the chairman of the subcommittee, which Tim has already done. So I nominate Tim. <laughs> So basically, we interviewed all all three uh, firms. Um, we could have picked anyone and been in good shape. They really, really were. All three were very impressive firms. Um, they knew their stuff. They were ready, ready to uh, ready to go. Um, money wise, they were all pretty much the same. Uh, we were really impressed with Clifford and Kenny as far as label counsel goes. Um, they're a small firm, but they have a lot of clients in. In this area, um, was it they said that 75% of Plymouth County they're up to now yes, or something? Yeah. yeah. Um, but they wanted absolutely nothing to do with uh, general counsel because they don't want to over they didn't want to overstretch. They were quite honest about that, and and I and we appreciate their honesty with that. Yeah, I remember. Um, yeah, and uh, I really was impressed with Clifford and Kenny the way they were talking of. How uh, they'd you know really like to bring a culture of accountability to town 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 offices. So I look forward to that, and I I, I think they were. I think that was a no-brainer for for the labor council and KP Law. Uh, you know, you guys all know Greg um, and uh, Amy, who we met with as well. Who does a lot of work with the zoning board and planning board and stuff. Um, I think they've done a pretty good job doing that. So. I didn't see any reason to to shake that up and move them around, but if you guys disagree, let me know. Did, but did, that's our recommendation. Did um, K and P have any hesitation about losing because they do our no. um, labor council too, right? Did they? Well, we haven't spoke to them yet because we haven't. It's not official oh, okay. until we vote tonight. Oh. Um, they did certainly don't want to lose our services. Right? Yeah, I mean, they they don't want to lose our services, but they they certainly bid for. To remain our labor council, but I was just more impressed with Clifford and Kenny. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I also think that I, th I think there's been a little, some maybe some hostility between some in some bargaining sessions that maybe a new face we can kind of clean that up a little bit. I'm sorry. Is KP Law they were open to just town council services from the beginning as well, or were they going for both and then came back and said they would do one? KP Law they. They treat them separately. Yeah, they treat right. them separately. Yeah. Right. They like interview separate teams. So yeah. So they would do just one. Yeah, they'll do whatever we, you know, want to pay them to do. So obviously, the, t the towns that you spoke of in Plymouth County, they probably have two different. They must because they only do um, legal, and they only do. Um, well, they do. Uh, council. They're only they're only general counsel for about two communities. They're, they're yeah. not. Right. They're not focused yeah, they're on. They specialize in the labor council yes. aspect. So, um, the, my question would be: Does this take take a place, uh, take effect, beginning of the fiscal year, or how does that work? Well, generally, there's a uh, it's a situation where any new work would start to go that way. I mean, starting after the board's vote, and then there'd be a transition of existing uh, work, uh, you know, over a period of time. So if KP Law is involved in some contract negotiations, now you let them finish those? Yeah, yeah. fortunately, the only thing we have, we don't have any collective bargaining agreements right now we're working on. There are some, some labor actions time. out there, but yeah. usually um, either, either finish those up or they you know, transition over some period of time. So it's, we'll have to talk to, I'll have to talk to both about that. Yep. Because yep. uh, Clifford and Kenny, they may not want to, they may not want to touch the stuff that's already in right. a that certain point. So I'll have to coordinate it'll, with them and see how they want it'll it. Be a, it'll be a, take a little getting used to because then we always had the same, for the most part that I can remember, the same council do both things, right? 
Do you, I mean, can you recall? Well, I, I, my, I don't, I'm not sure, but I think when Sean Cotter was town council, I don't believe he did labor work. Oh, okay. I don't okay. believe so. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, I don't think he did either, Rick. I think you're right. Yeah, so. I'm not positive, but I'm 99% sure you're right. Just staring at you right now on the wall. Like, so. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, have no I have no problem. Thank I want to, I appreciate the job you guys did because it is, it is working. You know, we may have you know, save a little money by doing this every one. And you can do it as often, you know, if it does not work out, you can do it in a year or two, you know, so. Perfect. It was, it was great to meet all the firms and, uh, and actually have the pitch. Learning experience for sure. Mm -hmm. And you were involved in this, Rick, too? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You have no concerns at all? Or? No, I, and I've known all of these people for a long time. They're, they're all very well regarded. So I, I, don't, I don't think, you, you couldn't make a bad decision. I think mm -hmm. it's just a matter of uh, time and place. It is what... Well, if you're looking for a motion, I will make a motion that we uh, continue town council services with KP Law and then um, retain Clifford and Kenny for labor council services. Moving forward. I'll second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Uh, update on police management and operations analysis. Yes, Mr. Chairman, as you know, I have a memo that I sent to the board, and I'll uh, go through it so reasonably thorough. But um, on February 18th, I did speak to the representatives of MRI to discuss the scope of services. Uh, but the particular question they wanted to confirm, because the scope is pretty clear, um, was the desire uh, for the town to have them uh, conduct a survey of current police officers as well as uh, former officers. Um, the reason they asked that is because it may be a situation um, where, you know, over some period of time, you know, the town may be concerned about a methodology. Uh, the, the, you know, I don't. I wasn't concerned about that because they did. They did say that you know it, these things are completely anonymous. Um, you know, there's no names. You know, there's identification codes that nobody sees except um, except them. Um, so I, I wouldn't have any reason to think that would be a, a problem. Uh, so once once we clarified that um, the uh, the amount of information they requested right up front was was significant, um, <clears throat> the chief provided um, but budget information, departmental directives, policies, procedures, shift schedules, calls for service statistics, organizational chat, uh, the roster, <coughs> collective bargaining agreements, and annual reports. Um, they will be down here on the 26th to go through to the station and get a sense of uh, the flow of how things work operationally within the station, uh, including drug and evidence security, holding area, dispatch, administrative offices, etc. So um, obviously I don't have the expertise to know what they're looking for, but this is where things are at the moment. And to the extent that they provide any updates or input, I will forward those to the board I don't know if they're going to afford any interim reports um, I think there will be a draft report that at some point um, <clears throat> as you know I, be I believe if you may recall that MRI uh, they were um, believe they could complete this project in about uh, I think six weeks which was by far the, f the quickest of any of the other applicants did I, choose, did I have that wrong Kevin maybe I thought it was I thought it was 180 days I thought it was like closer to six months. Okay. It, it could have been a lot. I could be wrong. <laughs> I thought it was a bigger number. Okay, fair, fair enough. Well, there's sixes in there. Yeah, but there's the a, sixes, yes, yeah. exactly. You could divide <laughs> divide anything by six if you choose to. So. <clears throat> uh, well, when are they coming on the 26th? Do they have a, a time set or? Um, not, uh, they haven't set a time with me. I don't know if they're setting that up with, to make sure the chief or whomever is available to take them through the station. <clears throat> so they haven't set that up with me, only the date itself. The, the information that they requested, is this just, do they go, is this just like the current, current list of all these or current years, if you will? Well, the budget information, they've looked uh, for the last uh, three years. <clears throat> the, the other things would be, would be, would be current. These are all be, uh, uh, yeah. 
as things exist today, right? Yeah, no, I'm saying, and it's a question on, might, maybe they're just asking one thing here, but the, the survey, oh. when you were talking about that, when they had a question about the survey, it's on here is on current police officers and former officers. I know yes. in, the, in the thing it was employees, was, is that just a, were they only asking for this specific area? Are they still doing employees? They're just asking for one of the uh, Well, they, they were spe specific to officers. Um, I think the scope said em employees. It said, yeah. oh, I, I'm just, if you no, I'm, again, that, I'm that'd be good to. Happy to, happy to pass that along. That's that's a big the methodology is gonna be the yeah, same. Yeah, and my question is, why would they, why would they question that? Because I'm, I'm almost positive we put it in the scope that it was <laughs> to uh, yeah. survey former officers. I'm just, I'm well, just they were they were just wanted to um, make sure uh, that that was what the I guess you know some of the things that they've come across in other places um, when things are completely anonymous. Um, mm -hmm. It's not so much that there's anything in tr within the department, but um, mm -hmm. uh, but we'll put it this way: word gets out on the street what somebody may have or may not have said or report, and and so it, it there may be concerns about that that may not be valid. But that doesn't mean they're not concerned about that. So I assured them that, that that's really not the case here in Abingdon. So let's stick to the scope. We don't need to scale anything back. Here you it's say not something I had thought of, but when he explained it, apparently they have been, uh, apparently in their experience over the years where um, there's a lot of uh, hearsay or gossip that can re re you know, re um, result from such things if you don't handle them uh, carefully. Which again, I think they described a methodology which should keep such things uh, private. And we said employees. Yeah, I'll pass yeah. that along. I'm not. And, uh, and the reason, I I, I mean, I, I know that I, I probably agreed to it, but I'm just now I'm trying to think there's, of there's, there's office help, there's dispatch. Right. Okay. You know, okay. Like, okay. Auxil yeah. Auxiliary yeah. is a big thing too. You know, right. Really considered office. That might not be off. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Yep. I think that's we had discussed uh -huh. that. So I just want to be sure. Sure. I will pass that. Nothing I concerned with. It says survey here. Is this a written survey type thing? I I was under the impression they were going to interview these people. Well, I think that's that's I that's for them to follow up with if they choose to. Uh, yeah, I don't. I, I think that's used in a different context, Jim, to survey the current police officers as well as some of former. Well, it, I should have brought I, I should have brought their response yeah. with us. I didn't think to, but you know, I think that I'm pretty sure it was covered in there that they would meet. Yeah, but we can yeah. sit here and go. Through, yeah, we can. Long to go through. I mean, the subcommittee is still intact, so we can yeah. look through it and see if there's any concerns. Well, I think just I mean. <laughs> <coughs> these people are experts and realistically for them to get to the the product you want I mean kind of have to defer to their expertise and how they and how they get there because mm -hmm. um, right, we didn't we didn't define the survey it, if they're using that in that context of a survey yeah we didn't define that and that's I think mm -hmm. something that I guess I'm a little I was a little confused with I sure. thought that we were going to have an initial meeting with them, but it seems like there's been a lot of back and forth already between yeah. yourself, the company, and the chief. I didn't realize. I thought they we were going to talk before that. But um, so, so when they're coming on the 26th, are we going to? Is there going to be a set meeting at all, or is it just for them to tour the police station? They're going down to tour the station. There isn't a specific meeting. And again, they're they're doing the things they do the way they do it. So they're not asking. They're not asking. Uh, um, See, they're not asking me, per se, to tell them or show them what to do. They, right. th they have a methodology they use. They collect the information they tell us they need. Right. We give it to them. We don't question it. And then and, they, and as I, they need I don't more think information, that we, I, they'll ask us for Sorry. I, I don't think that we said we were going to meet with them. I, I mean, I thought the I thought subcommittee we were, I, did yeah. that. but uh, I thought we were understanding that the subcommittee was going to remain on at least through, and we were going to have con like some sort of contact with them. But... Yeah, because there might I think be some extra work. Well, I, I would yeah, think. Well, I just we, you know, we didn't hear anything until I reached out to you, and then you had said that you know it was after. Well, the other thing I, w I would add, as we learned not that long ago, that um, subcommittees have to have meetings posted too. And, uh, yeah, that, that which is fine. We can post them. I yeah, just, I mean, again, if that's that something that uh, up, I didn't know if there was something more than that, or if they were looking to come in on their own and just tour the police station, if they were looking to meet. Uh, no, they're looking to again. They're 
they're not look I, I shouldn't put words in their mouth but I suspect they're not looking to be influenced unduly by anybody me the chief um, or anybody else that thinks uh, and again I'm I'm speculating that's the case because that's really what can we have what the, they've been asked to do so can we have the subcommittee CC'd on all the emails between you and them sure and the yeah, chief and them just I think, I think it'll be just level playing field no. everyone along yeah just them. just so there's no more confusion and I'll be and, happy to uh, yeah. forward you everything we've already yeah conversations that have already occurred and you can any Ooh, questions let me know you know what yeah. you know influence it one way or the other it's you know what I mean we're all involved we've been we've been dealing with it we thought we were going to meet with them so watch uh, out Move forward, kind of, you know, yeah, we'll I'll, say, I'll, uh, I'll forward you all the information, the right. emails well, we, that we, have come we, and gone. We need to stay in the loop too because we may see something falling through the cracks. That's why of the extra money that we talked about, yeah, right? So, you know, we could apply, you know, this uh, we, we forgot this isn't a covenant in the scope, but can you please do this? You know, as sure, because we, we had a little extra money, right? right. You you may find other right. Things and that way, right. if we know what the progress is and what's going on, and what you mm -hmm. know, hey, this is in the scope, but you. Are you going to do this because you know, or maybe seems like we're already well, they better we're already left in the behind on this. That's well, my once feeling. again, I there is a, there's a scope of services which um, it's, it's, not, bit, it's not my job to tell them how to do their job. Yeah, so in us, as a again, I'll be happy to forward you anything that's already. I also feel strongly we we shouldn't tell them how to to do their job either. Yeah, but right. just tell us what you're doing. Sure. Yeah. yeah. They should have a clear understanding of what we're sure. looking for. Because then, then Kevin and I can meet and say, "Whoa, whoa, wait a second! Something's, something's not happening here. That's supposed to be happening, or, or what? We, we didn't, we didn't need this. What, why are you doing this? Yeah. That's what it's about. Or I mean, that could be absolutely cool. Everything could be great. Or everything's yeah. gonna be great. It's <laughs> gonna go as planned. Yeah. It's just. Sure. <laughs> no, I. Ain't but not. it's just yeah. I mean, should be some oversight. Concerns are valid. We started this. We. We built it from scratch, and here we are. It's just I like to be involved with it. All right. Anything else on the uh, police management and operations? No, I'm just glad to see it's moving mm -hmm. pretty quick too now. So it's good. good. Update on the senior center roof. I per perhaps not as fast as six weeks. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Just so you're aware, the senior center roof is, uh, project has been put out to bid and the uh, submissions are due next Thursday. So this, um, I know there's been a lot of uh, conversation over the years um, among board members as well as members of the Council on Aging. Um, but we did conduct a site inspection this past week um, on the coldest day, of course. And this week we will be issuing an addendum to reflect some of the conversations from some of the contractors who participated. Um, the building department through our uh, assistant building inspector, Jim Banda. I don't know if any of you have met Jim. Jim's been with us for a couple of years, and he's a, a retired Marshfield building commissioner. We're very, very lucky to have him. Uh, he has uh, uh, developed the scope with us, and he will amend the scope based upon the conversations and has agreed, to, um, and, and willingly, I might add, to be the project manager on behalf of the town as this moves forward. Um, so, as I mentioned here, this is outside of his duties, so we, uh, we appreciate his willingness uh, to, uh, to, to help us out in this regard. Early spring is when we hope to have this project started, depending on the weather. So, if anybody asks you when you're down the Council on Aging, Jim, Kevin, or anybody else, <laughs> we are moving on this. <clears throat> Uh, fire building feasibility study update. Yes, um, the, the chief and I both agreed that it's probably it's premature to give a you know a, a really in-depth thorough um, update just yet. But I, I want to keep the board as in, uh, up to date as possible. Um, this was uh, I did ask the chief to give me uh, some update. This is what he provided me, and um, he states. And again, I know the board is right up for the public's consumption that uh, there are a number of parts of the overall study uh, that have been conducted. These include an analysis on both the existing fire station, a needs assessment of the Abington Fire Department in terms of its, rec of its space needs, uh, the fl a floor plan for a, a new facility based upon that needs assessment, and some possible site locations, in, uh, re in which includes response time survey um, 
once these are com completed, a final cost estimate will be submitted. Uh, obviously, you say, well, how do you get from, you know, what you see here to a cost estimate? Well, uh, to some extent, <coughs> with, you know, site development, costs are different, obviously, from any, any station anywhere in the country, depending on uh, the, the, you know, the space that you've chosen. But there are a, a number of, a, of models uh, that have de been developed over the years in other towns uh, that these, the committee has surveyed, I, I believe, about a dozen police, I mean, fire departments all over the region. So they've done a lot of homework. So they kind of know and uh, what they're looking at in terms of uh, what a st design of a station. So hopefully, with, with re once a, um, the space is defined, um, they've got an idea of what those uh, site development costs might be. Uh, it won't be that difficult to at least have a reasonable estimate uh, to move move forward with, or at least to bring to the next next step. The biggest issue, as you might expect and know, is the site location. There's a couple sites. Uh, they've, they've narrowed it down a little bit in terms of what is probably the most feasible to have one station. I know we talked several times about the North School as being a possibility. Uh, another location that uh, they believe right now is, is very attractive is right here on uh, Glenowitz Way, uh, what, next to what is the Housing Authority. There's who's they? I'm sorry. Who's they? The, the, the feasibility study. Yeah, the feasibility study uh, committee and, okay. and the architect. That has some uh, challenges in that part of that land That's was right. owned by the housing authority, and, and there's also a pri private owner to some of the other land. So, uh, I've tried to make contact with both. I played some photo tag with Mr. Uh, the with the uh, executive director of the housing authority because we have to get on the property. Uh, so they can, do, you know, do some wetlands analysis to see if it's really, really feasible before the, it, to, before we can go too forward with the, uh, with the site analysis. So those are the two primary locations right now that are being looked at. There hasn't haven't been any uh, really any other uh, locations in town that seem to be advantageous just yet. So that's that's the the biggest. Uh, it's always the biggest issue for the community is where, where they're going to put a facility like that. The chief has also um, wanted to point out that they have some water damage at Station 2. They do have a um, um, living space that is uh, challenged by that, some masonry issues. I know he spoke to me today about um, um, having to deal with some roof, maybe a new roof or Hopefully that can be, as he agrees, you know, just uh, patched, maintained, because it, it doesn't make sense to do any significant repairs on that building until we know where this project is going. So at some point, um, I have asked him to let me know when not just him, but the feasibility committee feels like they're ready to make a, more, a thorough presentation to the Board of Selectmen. So get ready for that. Right. Any questions on the five bone? The, the feasibility study, they're doing an analysis, like you said, of both existing fire stations. They're going to look at them and see what they need for repairs to re, be rehabbed if, if need be. To some extent, yes. I think that the, <laughs> for, the, for the, primary, the primary goal is to determine what the needs are of the department for the next you know, 20, 30 years going forward. It's, it's not... Um, it's not a, uh, in, in the goal is to have a central fire station, not to have to have two fire stations because that's obviously has cost implications uh, that isn't as effective as a central fire station. Uh, but it's not an analysis um, of station two is not being reviewed at this time at least uh, for an overall cost to repair it and bring it up to, up to um, code and um, full operation because realistically the goal isn't to have you know, two stations ultimately. Is, was that a decision by the fire the, um, the fire station building committee that's or the feasibility study? Um, the group has but that's one of the things they've been they've talked about. Which, again, the, the goal being a central fire station makes makes sense because this, as we know, this location is not just not advantageous any longer, either right. the station any, or the location. Any of this has to be approved anyway, Rick. I mean, oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's a study. 
you know it's understand. I'm just yes. uh, yep. not a fifty like let's look at fifty thousand foot view of this. It's just are we sure. are they not looking at it because they were they were told they want to do a central fire station or are they just not looking at it because they're saying it's 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 bad. We're not going to. That's what my question. Well, it's, it's not so much that it's bad. It's just that the goal is to is to have that uh, a location be declared surplus and something the town can can sell or reuse for another municipal purpose because if there is a central fire a, a new station one yeah the goal is to not have to have that station at all because you're not going to build a new station spend i know what you're saying i, I understand well yeah i just i mean yeah. if it's if it's the station is still feasible to be rehabbed and used that's that would be a question that we're doing the study why are we not looking at that yeah, I, think and it, I think it's kind of a done deal. There's going to be one well, new station. I, I guess instead yeah, of these yeah. two. And, and, yes. and by all means, yeah. Let's. Sure. I, I would love the most up-to-date yeah. facilities as well. I just. Right. I I don't know what year these these buildings were built. How old? I mean, are they from the 1800s? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds yeah. like. Route 18 was 61. Yeah. I'm sorry. 61. 61 yeah. and 73, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm just. I mean, there's a lot of things that are a lot older than that that are still I, fine. But I guess my. My other question is, we just saw the other day on on the news, I mean, the news is invited into the fire station to do a whole review of this in a, in a segment on the news of how bad the fire stations are. Yeah. Was that was well, that authorized through you or no, who authorized uh, them the, to come uh, in and do this? The department did not ask for any press. The, so press, the press called the chief and me I referred them to the chief um, for any comments or, or interviews regarding the uh, the feasibility study and the needs of the department uh, I I suspect and the chief suspects that uh, something out in the, you know social media or whatever caught their attention they thought was worth a I don't even I didn't even see what it, what the coverage was Kevin so I but that's where the, the chief suspects that uh, the comments came from there was an outreach to the media at all understand well I just the meet someone invited the media in I mean they took they were had a video of the fire state I mean someone authorized that to happen I, if well, we have a feasibility study going on that's analysis of both existing fire stations why are we putting it out the news well the department did their own is that uh, has done their own sway this feasibility study it's just that's what i'm kind of well, like i about. said the t department did not invite the media in to do any present to do any investigation or um, the department itself has done some um some at work in fact most of the pictures you would have seen on social media you saw right here when the chief did a presentation a couple yes. months ago so there's nothing new there um, to the extent there may have been any videos taken uh, by the by the uh, uh, department for their own uh, study purposes, but there was no outreach to the media. Any media request um, came through their own investigation. I guess what I guess what he's saying. Uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I'll be missing something. But wouldn't somebody like the chief or you be the one that would allow the press to come in? Who? I, I didn't see the, the, well, the news. The chief gave an interview, so they asked him. I mean, we, they said we want to. We're, we're doing this story. Can, okay, we, have an, sure. can okay. we have an interview? And he yeah. answered a couple questions. Okay, did they do anything? Yeah, just answering video, questions, the, or video they, footage of the with both the stations. ambulances back up? Both stations. Sure. Hey, Someone, no warning. I mean, the news station didn't just come down and see the front door open to walk in and start videotaping. Someone authorized them to come down. If we have a feasibility study. Let's let the feasibility study finish before we're in the public. We're going out on the news, and when we go to sell these buildings, if that's what they are, deemed surplus. I mean, we're already we're devaluing them even more than we. But we're hurting the town in an aspect because we're showing it is all the deficiencies. Well, you can't the ask the public for a new building if you don't demonstrate the need for the building. That doesn't. That's why we have a feasibility study. Yes, but the feasibility study. Well. The chief came in here and made a presentation. There's nothing different from what you've already seen. So it's already been here. It's already been um, you know, public. The press wants to cover it. The press will cover it. If the press doesn't want to cover it, the press doesn't cover it. But when the press asks for a comment for an interview, uh, and the chief is the person who has the most information, we don't tell the press, no, thank you. Um, you tell the press. You try to deal with, help the press do their job. And there's nothing to be defensive or ashamed of by doing that. So, you're saying that you gave permission for the fire chief to allow the interview to move forward? 
because he is the chief most doesn't need it. permission to talk to the press. We have yeah. a lot of departments that talk to the press. We don't. I just want to clarify. That's all. Okay. Yeah. No. I mean, we don't have a. a there's no approval process for speaking to the press if something uh, with, is within someone's expertise, whether it's the police, the fire chief, or whatever the case is. We don't. I mean, if there's a concern by a particular department, they may have been asked a question. They would certainly. Uh, you know, ask me whether or not they thought it was appropriate, and sometimes we might ask counsel to make sure something is something that shouldn't be discussed. But, um, you know, I was asked for an interview, and quite frankly, I'm not the person who has enough information to yeah, speak to the press. Right. So I deferred to the to the fire chief if he w wished to speak to the press. And realistically, when the press asks you for a comment on what could be ultimately a major financial project. It's probably not a good idea mm -hmm. to say you don't want to talk about it. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, I think the comment would have been there's a feasibility study going on, we'll, which we'll have the results shortly. But I understand. I, get it. I, understand. I, I actually agree. I know where you're going with this. Yeah. I'm sorry. I mean, it's it. It seems kind of. I mean, it's a, it's a done, it's a done deal, frankly. Yeah, you, I, I mean, I you, can, you can tell that, and, and it has been. And it's it, not a bad thing. That it's a done deal. I mean. But it's not yeah, a done no, deal. Not, no, it, it isn't. But, but <laughs> the media uh, yeah. tension no, is I mean, the done I, deal. I think anybody that saw that presentation realizes those buildings are in disrepair and they need to be taken care of. Mm, you know, absolutely. and uh, and just by the looking at them, you know that the cost is going to be exorbitant to repair those buildings. And even when they're repaired, they're not ideal. They're not. They're not in ideal locations. Um, so I, yeah, yeah, I think it's. I'm going to call it a done deal. I, I see. I see your point, though. You know, maybe. But you also, um, when something happens at the school, they interview the school superintendent. Yep. When they, when someone happens, in, a tragedy happens, they interview the, the, the police chief. So. Understandable. Um, I mean, I, yeah. I don't see them yeah. and walking fairness, into the school, into the classroom, saying, yeah. "Here's where it happened." This mm -hmm. is, you know. But yeah. it's possible too. I yeah. haven't seen what you're referring to either. So I'm maybe speaking a little bit out of turn, because uh, you're obviously referring to something that. No, I, I haven't seen it either, right. but, but I, yeah. I, I get. I get it. I just yeah. there's a this feasibility study. I was just was figuring we were going to get the results sure. of this before. It, it was a story on Channel Ten. Yeah. Right. Um, but I think it was the only one. Yeah, the video. It's on, yeah, on Facebook. It was on Facebook. Facebook. Right, and one of the um, newscasters for Channel Ten is very active on Lake Lampton, lives here in town. So when right. the chief or the Hampton Fire Department put that out on Life in Abington the pictures of the disrepair that Rainy. probably prompted a phone call to the newsroom and okay. but, and the chief gave an interview and yeah. was honest with it's it's political they need they need the public support to get this so the chief's gonna say I, I get that guys we need this because if I he didn't say that, that he would ask you know, I see the hey, reach in your station. pockets, and everybody's like, I didn't know anything was wrong. I it's see the conditions of the station, too, and I, <laughs> yeah. I, I agree. I, I agree. The stations are in the I wasn't floor. aware it's of just, that, Tim. Thank you. It's just as a feasibility. So that, I guess that was more, more my thing. Is, you know, I'll tell you, it's not it's also no offense to anyone, this is, but it's not only the conditions of the building. It's the safety of the employees. Exactly, for the firefighters. Exactly. safety yeah. of all those employees that work in those two buildings. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I've seen some of the stuff that they've gone through, and, you know, Backing up a truck, almost getting hit by it, whatever, and I'm not going to go into a bunch yeah. of details, but it's important for them too, Absolutely. and then we have to be responsible for them. The conditions of firehouses are always immediate favorite. As you know, I was a firefighter. I've had two firehouses that I was in that made it to the newspapers, made it to the TV. Recently, Plymouth was in the new, in the news about their conditions. Um, yeah, there's a lot more to it than just the st structural deficiencies. Is the health of the guys where they're hanging their gear up, how they're cleaning their gear, what they're exposed to while they're in the, in the building, yeah. too. Um, technology. I just thought we have a host tower. Yeah. I really didn't, you didn't know, know that was the host tower. I didn't know that was the host tower. <laughs> <laughs> Did you think that was for Santa Claus? I don't know what it was. <laughs> that was for the bell, right? I don't ever look at it, I guess. Yeah. Sorry. Technology has changed so much in the fire service that a lot of these yeah. firehouses are just outdated. Yeah. They, they need to step up. Absolutely. But also technology has changed in that everything is posted to Facebook so everybody in town knows. Oh yeah. You know, because it gets replayed and replayed over. So people are gonna have people have their opinion from day one. When our meeting mm -hmm. was, was you know, everybody you know, mm -hmm. the tides I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but more people know 
issues. You know, everybody knows there's a pothole in a certain street because yep. you yeah. posted mm -hmm. on Facebook, okay. you know. So everybody knows about the condition of the, the buildings. I just, yeah, for the taxpayers, we have a feasibility study that's being conducted. We're going to get results. We're on it. Yeah. It's just, I would think, for the residents would want to see that be done before. Then by all means, if it's done and here's the, here's the results, let's tell the world. Mm -hmm. I will add, too, that the uh, participation, particularly from, uh, from the firefighters, uh, volunteers, are really... Um, it's really quite quite impressive, um, and as Jim <clears throat> mentioned, some things the level of detail, uh, operationally and otherwise, that that unless you've been in the profession, you just don't understand. So it's been a little eye opening. So I think uh, the advocacy and the participation of some of these firefighters is really uh, really impressive. It's, yeah, it's great. To and, have I, them involved. and I can't the blame them. They, they want a new building, I, and I don't blame them. The same thing happened. Mm -hmm. The police wanted a new building way back then. The library wanted a new building, so because it was so did the town hall. Yes, yeah, they, they wanted their own buildings. They didn't want to combine with that. Don't, don't get me going. <laughs> <laughs> well, and not to not to bring up a, a I'm going to bring it up a, a, a sensitive topic, but this has actually been raised uh, with regard to Station Two, uh, in the end of the uh, concept of putting, you know, bad money after good money. Um, the the uh, uh, the high school windows uh, comes up where we're That's still paying for windows that I was involved in that. Don't, uh, so that was your decision, Tom? No. No one you are not running for no, I think, uh, you don't want to go back to that, I'll tell you. I mean, I wasn't here at the time, but uh, my understanding is it would be hard to disagree at that time that they needed new windows. Um, on the other hand, paying for windows that you don't. Right, but then the study, the, the study came, we need a new school. So yeah. that's and the opportunity for state money came in for the school, right. too, so you don't yeah. want to pass it up. Yep. True. So, I, I, you know, it's, but it is interesting that in the context specifically of Station 2, that, that has been raised. So, so I'm sorry to bring up a sensitive topic for, I'll apologize personally to Peter Schaefer tomorrow. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the rugs then. Carpets. <clears throat> Yes, this is a, a, a good project that's going on. You may recall that last town, town meeting we had plans to replace both the town hall and library carpeting. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, in this building, you probably recall that we had a, a couple septic um, backups, and we did have some insurance recovery funds that helped with uh, the town hall. But as of the uh, first week of January, the library staff started to prepare for this move by uh, moving collections and creating space. And the, I'm sorry, saying the books, uh, I'm sorry, the books are being currently stored in the, the Copeland meeting room, a lot of these books. The children's room stacks are moving into the Anderson story room. Some of you who, who if you haven't been in the library recently, it's uh, uh, if you don't know your way around here, it might not make a lot of sense of the names of these rooms. I tried to go there today, but it's closed. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that, that was pointed out by others, Ken. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know that in a sec. Um, well, cutting, cutting to the chase here. Um, as of midday Friday, the, the children's room carpeting is complete. The stacks have been replaced and properly set, and the books are being returned to their shelves. The main space should be completed by next Tuesday. That's... Uh, tomorrow, followed by the meeting rooms, uh, Nero Young Adult Room, Adult Fiction, Nonfiction Stacks, um, Study Rooms, Offices, and other small rooms. So the project is on schedule. You know, to watch these uh, ladies and gentlemen go about their business over there in terms of moving stacks and is really quite quite fascinating. The company that that we're using as one that really spe specializes in moving library stacks. If you're going to, uh, who'd have thunk there's a specialty for moving library stacks? Uh, but the the level of this of um, lack of disruption to the administrative staff um, while um, all this is going on is quite quite amazing. So the trustees, uh, um, as you can see, thank the selectman finance committee um, and others. Uh, for their assistance during this time, uh, this is this is really a good project that 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 uh, is a, a long time coming. So I would encourage you, if you have some time during the day, in the next guy, you know, if you go in the back door, uh, Deb is more than happy to give you a little bit of the history of the recent project. Um, 
or you can just wait till it's open, Ken. <laughs> I dropped the book off there today. I didn't have to go in. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions on that? All right. Affordable Housing Trust update. Yes, this is a, I, I have attached to, I have a memo here attached to which is a draft bylaw. Uh, Ken had done some homework on it, on the Massachusetts um, Housing Partnership. Uh, and I don't know everyone who's on it, Ken. I, I know you're, Ken's on the uh, Housing Partnership, the Abington Housing Partnership. And he asked me to take a look at, at um, drafting a bylaw. So we did that based upon s some examples that I was able to uh, find from some other towns. Um, attached also is the guidebook for municipal affordable housing trusts, uh, which is, I, I think, very helpful. Once again, it's not exciting reading, but it's very, I think it's very helpful to understand um, all of this. Um, like I said, if, if anybody's interested in hard copies, if anybody's interested in e e emails, um, we've got with the, uh, the municipal, uh, the, the Massachusetts book, uh, let me know. If the board wishes to pursue a bylaw in this coming town meeting, um, because a bylaw is a, a little bit more complicated than a simple warrant article for $14,000, for example, um, I would prefer to send it to council right sooner rather than later. Um, even though the warrant clo doesn't close till March 31, uh, I think it's helpful to give council a head start on these types of uh, bylaws. So Ken, I don't know if you want to speak to it further. Um, yeah, the housing partnership, uh, we met numerous times. Um, it's myself, uh, Bruce Hughes from the planning board, and Jennifer uh, Sullivan from the um, housing authority. Um, we realize that every year, at least 10% of the CPA funds have to go to housing, and they haven't spent it yet. Um, so that's at least, in reality, up to 80% each year could go for housing in town. Um, so we met and we, we kind of said the main two priorities in town that we feel, and I think, I'm hoping the board will feel, are to try to keep the young people in town and to keep the, the elders, um, housing for the elderly, um, for people so they can stay. So the young and the old. Um, with that being said, uh, we would like to pursue, if it has a housing trust, we can um, hopefully take care of some of those issues. Uh, we would like to have a first time home buyers program where Edmonton residents, um, young, young people, could get a little bit of a break or a little help um, for a down payment on their house. And also in turn, maybe work with some, uh, um, try to increase the number of housing. I, I believe there's a seven year wait or it's some ridiculous amount for, for housing for the elderly. So we could work with, um, right here off of Charal, the housing project there off the elderly housing, there's more land they could build, there's just no federal funds. But with this housing trust, you can take the CPA money, you, you could call it C money, but you can get money from other, other sources. I mean, we, we researched a uh, project, um, I think it was in uh, Cambridge, that used 25 different sources of funds. And there's grants, there's, there's, grants, there's yep. state money, there's federal money, mm -hmm. and with this, with this uh, trust fund, you can use that. You know, you can put it all in there, and then we could. You know, I would love for a private-public pu partnership where, you know, someone comes in and builds housing, and then it, we turn it over to the housing authority so that Abington residents, you know, can shorten the list a little bit. So that's what. Um, and anything that uh, the housing trust um, votes on would have to be approved by town meeting and that sort of stuff. So uh, the, we think the key is to form this housing trust uh, fund. The partnership fund. So, and I'll as a, uh, I'll, I'll provide more details, and we'll get the housing authority in here to, to go over it with you folks, just exactly what we're what we're envisioning. So, Tim, will that, will that because I know what our, the housing authority uh, is not controlled by Abington here in Abington is controlled by Brockton, which we've discussed a couple of times, I think. So, I, I mean, I'm certainly interested in this for for the elderly. Um, especially for senior housing, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's just a thing that Abington is. We're, uh, I, I don't even know the phrase. We're, we're just not up to snuff, and the and a lot of seniors know that, and, and they're I think they a lot of them are so disappointed um, that they, you know, they're not getting any senior housing or anyway. But 
I'm certainly in favor of and, this, and, and I wouldn't and mind putting it on the. And when, when, when you start this trust, you, you can you can borrow, so that you know the town doesn't have to pay for it. It comes out of this, this trust. You know the payments mm -hmm. will come out. That sort of stuff. It gives you the money for down payments and right. to borrow in different different projects. But our main priorities would be those right now. But further down the road, there may be other things. And then you you can use uh, CPA funds. You can amortize use mm -hmm. to amortize uh, uh, projects. And I guess it, the, you know, again, I, I do believe that the, the vehicle have voted to give us some, some of the funds this year to get it, to get the ball rolling. So, mm -hmm. and then we'll do all and try to. We also plan to have someone come and speak, and hopefully we can get some people in there to talk, explain exactly before this article comes up at town meeting to explain exactly what the, the affordable housing trust is and how it works and operates. So. Mm -hmm. I, thought, I mean, I see no problem with getting this, uh, Rick. I don't think you need to vote, but I think getting well, maybe you do, but. Um, you know, at least getting it over to town council and having a review in, in case we want to get it on to the, you know, town meeting or whatever, so. And, and this is a, I think we all know the aging demographic, um, and not in the United States. This is, you know, this is a, becoming a, a widespread problem. And to what extent, uh, you know, the federal or state government may, may just decide to direct resources in this, in this direction, it would certainly be good to have vehicles set up to work with any grants, as Ken mentioned, to leverage any other private funding um, using CPA funds, um, whether it be for you know, uh, seeding grant money or local matches for programs. Right. So and these funds would still be under control of the town treasurer collector. They just wouldn't be used for general, you know, right. general, into the general fund. So you don't need a motion tonight to send no, that to town I, council? I, just I, without any op opposition, I will presume to do that. Any opposition? No. Say thanks to Ken and the, and the board, the Affordable Housing Trust, for putting the work in. This is a lot of work, and it's cool to see something moving forward. Mm -hmm. it, it's, def no, it's definitely needed, so we're excited, and hopefully we can move forward and help. I could get you. <laughs> Next two items are a little out of order in your packet. Uh, yeah. Number nine. Uh, was, we can move to number nine. Was the late, well, it's actually <laughs> number eight that I have something. Uh, number nine is uh, irrelevant because we don't have the application in front of us to be laying out streets. Uh, the next selectman's meeting, we hope to have that application. So last thing I have is just an update on the budget process. Uh, and I made it very clear on the agenda that this is not a presentation, <laughs> because I suspect we may have had a challenge quorum this evening had I had I done that. So, uh, the good news, bad news. Uh, good news is is our chapter 78 uh, on so-called cherry sheet, which no one knows what that means. But apparently, back in the 60s and 70s, the state sent out these estimates on cherry-colored paper. So it's called the cherry sheet um, to this day. Got to be a trivia question in a meeting of six months. <laughs> yeah. So again, we get approximately one million dollars in additional Chapter 78, which is, uh, you know, uh, we were very happy to see that until we got a better sense of the fact that it's essentially targeted to deal with some some issues uh, within the school department, some targets that they need to meet, and. We can speak to that further as the budget process progresses. Um, so that's the good news. The bad news is that to the extent that uh, these funds um, are essentially, you know, I guess they're, no, they're not earmarked in a, you know, in a legal sense, but effectively the school department, uh, you know, hopes that they can utilize all those funds, which creates some issues because along with uh, the programs they'd like to, um, you know, to meet the pro require additional staffing. Those that staffing has other costs that come along with it, uh, health insurance, for instance, and uh, other other softer costs. They're talking about six to seven new positions, which that's a lot of lot of money for health insurance. Whether or not, presumably, those additional funds are supposed to be used to help with you know, overall personnel costs, not just um, the school's personnel pieces. But these are conversations we're, we're, we're currently having. At the moment, we have made a slight adjustment to our estimated receipts and new growth to uh, capture 
um, about another two hundred thousand dollars or so. So unfortunately, we, we're kind of back where we started in terms of our paper deficit um, is a little more of a real deficit, which again is not overwhelming uh, for this town at this time of year. Other factor we have here is that um, we've been notified of um, up to a 22% increase in tipping fees for recyclables. Uh, that would uh, add about another $200,000 uh, that is not currently accounted for and the deficit noted above. Are the tipping fees locked in for a year at a time? Those are pa direct pass-through um, from re from re Republic, which means that, uh, you know, the Whatever they get charged disposal, per day, yeah. in a, in a, it's yeah. a direct pass-through. So yep. that could be their up and down month. We have no month. control. No, we have no control. The only thing is... Uh, like I said, we're doing our homework to see if this is typical right now. If it's, I th we think it's specific to the Marshfield um, uh, plant. Um, whether or not, again, there's other other end users that Republic uh, may be seeking to take advantage of. If it's even possible, it's it's. I think this is this is the world we're in at the moment. Unfortunately, you know, the reality is we our budget would now be exceeding one one and a half million dollars. Um, you know, it's, it's essentially going to be about a half million dollars more than the two overrides that were voted historically for this purpose. And if this continues to rise, I think... Don't say it. It's going to bring it... What's that? I'm sorry? Don't say it. It's going, to, it's going to present a policy question. How's that? Okay. As, uh, as, as to whether or not there ought to be another mechanism, whether it's user fees or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. Again, that's a policy decision down the road for this Board of Selectmen. <laughs> Is that diplomatic enough, Ken? I'm with Tom. I'm not running again. <laughs> <laughs> How about? No, but it, but it is so a problem. Just, just don't say override. That's all. No, no. I've uh, user yeah, fee. Yeah, I didn't hear that other word. Actually, suggested a, an underride of the amount that the two overrides, and then and then then you're on your own. And then institute a well, not on your own, but you have got a curbside program that's that's funded through user fees. As I mentioned, I haven't said that to a lot of people, but now we get into a situation where it demonstrates that you have a major budget buster that's, that in the last few years has been so volatile. How do, you build your, how do you build a municipal budget that's sustainable when you literally don't know from not just you know, year to year, but even from month to month perhaps what, what it's going to cost? So it's premature, uh, but it's just something, uh, you know. Isn't that kind of how we treat snow plowing, though? I'm sorry? Isn't that like kind of how we treat snow plowing? Yeah, but you can't overspend you can't, your trash yeah. budget. No. Unless it becomes only, a, only snow plowing is the only one right. you can overspend. Unless it becomes a health hazard, which you can't. And, and realistic, uh, realistically, we, we do have some, um, some ability to predict your costs for snow removal. I mean, obviously, you can't predict the weather too well, but you can take the average, yeah. You might have, you'll have a year, you know, you have a year. And, I'm not going to talk about this year at the moment for the sake of uh, being blamed. <laughs> but it's, it is reasonably stable over a period of time. So as I mentioned, this is not a decision for today. It may not be a decision we ever have to face. But I think it has Tom to won't. be. I think it, what's, I'm sorry? <laughs> Tom won't have to ever face it. Yeah, I, I, I just think it has to be put out there that this is becoming a budget buster that, that at the moment we, um, and again, we're not alone, but cities and towns are uh, having a very tough time controlling. So that adds up to a, a challenge into the, the budget that uh, projection originally we did build in some, uh, some positions like a planner slash economic development director, um, some, uh, some dispatch staffing in the police department, part-time uh, library position. Obviously, we want to sustain as much as we can. You know, again, it's still some time to get through this process. I'm sure we will, but um, that's If you have any questions, please let me know, and I'll refer you to uh, Republic Way Services. Mm -hmm. You good with that, Ken? <laughs> all right. And considering I just gave you all these updates, there's no town manager report this evening. There is none? There is none. It's on my agenda. It's not in the packet. I'll be happy to write you a memo. <laughs> <laughs> this whole meeting felt like a town manager report. Did it? Well, yeah. that's what it was. That's pretty much. Pretty much so. 
And I will, uh, before I leave tonight, send uh, Ken and Kevin correspondence email that I have between MRI in the town. Thank you. Excellent. Any questions for the town manager before we adjourn? Anything that we need for next agenda that we can think of? I have a question. A while back, the building inspector had wanted to raise fees. We had asked him well, to come in and present, right. and did he, he change he his got mind? He a little bashful about that, apparently. So I told him whenever it is he's preferred, then, but I'm not, I'm not seeking him out to facilitate. So those fees that. haven't, that haven't be, been raised. Be, he's still... Right. That would be up to him to come to me. I'm okay. He'd come to you and then... And then I discovered you. Either you come to us or he comes to us. No, exactly. Our uh, next meeting is March 9th. Sure. Okay. Sounds good. That's all I had. You will still be here? I'm leaving the next morning. Perfect. You will be here then? I will be here on March 9th. So March 10th is our next meeting? Yes. Make a motion. <laughs> I'm leaving on the oh. 11th. <laughs> make a motion to adjourn. Second. Who made that motion? I did. Did you? Sorry, who did? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Who was the second?